Hello everybody, welcome to another Yellow Chair Devotional. We're going to look at another book of the Bible together. We've been looking at one book every single day and we're seeing how all 66 books, how they fit into the big picture. The big picture of God's love story for you and me. He loves us so much. He sent Jesus to save us. Satan was defeated at the cross and now he's trying, he's trying everything he can to get at us so that we will turn and listen to his lies rather than the love of God. And that's what we're going to see play out in our book of the Bible today. So we have been in the category of what we've called the Pauline epistles or the letters of Paul. And so we're in the New Testament. The good news, the gospel about Jesus is spreading like wildfire. And Paul is one of those apostles going around telling everybody about Jesus. And so his letters that he writes are to different churches, to groups of believers in the new Christian church. And he's encouraging them and giving them his ideas of what God is doing in his life. Right? We talked about the testimony, the witness, the great things that God does in our lives. And how when we share that, that is what lifts us up. It's what encourages us. It's what brings us closer to God. And so, so far we looked at the book of Romans, and then we looked at the book of 1 Corinthians, and this was a letter to the church in Corinth. Well, today we're looking at 2 Corinthians. This is another letter that Paul wrote to the church in Corinth. This letter had to deal with how do we be a church? How do we be in a church when there's people who worship Greek gods? There's people like this. There's people like, like the Christian church. That was a brand new thing. And if I was always a Jew, but now I believe in Jesus and now I'm going to be a Christian, how do I do it? Do I still follow all the things that we did as Jews? So they were sorting things out and we saw how Paul compared it to a body and how all of us are parts of the body of Christ. There's the hands, the feet, the ears, the eyes. We all have a special part to play, but we're all part of the family of God. We're all part of Christ's body. Well, now in the book of 2 Corinthians, we're going to see Paul again talk about the body, but now he's going to talk about it more in a physical sense, not a metaphorical sense, which means that instead of it being an illustration or a word picture, it's more about what Paul is going through because in the book of 2 Corinthians, Paul has been struggling because there is an enemy, right? Even though Satan the serpent was stomped at the cross, right? He was defeated. The end. He knows that he loses. He is lost. Done. Jesus wins. But has Jesus come back yet? No, we're still waiting for Jesus to come back. And until that day comes, the defeated serpent Satan is doing everything he can to deceive us, to pull us away from Jesus. And so Paul is experiencing this. He is struggling and he's telling the church in Corinth some of the ways that the enemy has been discouraging him, attacking him, getting in the way of things, not just for Paul, but also for the church in Corinth. So let's turn to the book of 2 Corinthians together. So let's start in the back of our Bible. We're going to start in the back because look, we're not flipping very far. We're just going to flip past Revelation, past some really small books that you probably didn't notice because they're only a page long, past the Thessalonians, Philippians, and then before you know it, you're going to hit 2 Corinthians. We're going to start in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. So we're looking for big number 4. But then I want to start in verse 16. Verse 16. It's so little number 16. Pause the video if you need a little bit more time to find it. We're going to be in 2 Corinthians 4, 16. We're going to kind of jump around because we don't have a lot of time to read all of this. And it can get a bit overwhelming. So we're going to jump around a little bit. So starting here, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 16. All right, so here's what Paul is saying to them. He goes, so we do not give up, right? The enemy's attacking in lots of ways, but we do not give up. Our physical body is becoming older and weaker, but our spirit inside of us is made new every day. We have small troubles for a while now, but they are helping us gain an eternal glory. That glory is much greater than the troubles. So we set our eyes not on what we can see, 
but what we cannot see. What we see will last only a short time, but what we cannot see will last forever. We know that our body, the tent that we live in here on earth, will be destroyed. But when that happens, God will have a house for us to live in. It will be a house not made by men. It will be a home in heaven that will last forever. But now we're tired of this body. We want God to give us our heavenly home. All right, so let's pause there and just see what's happening here. Okay, so he's saying, we're tired. I'm tired. Because Paul got persecuted. Paul, who used to persecute Christians, he's now getting in trouble. He's getting thrown into prison. He's had people try and stone him. He's had to run for his life. He has run into so many problems because he is sharing the good news of Jesus. And he's saying, I understand church in Corinth. We're tired. We have struggles. The enemy is attacking us because the enemy does not want us sharing the good news about Jesus. The enemy wants us to give up, to not let that Holy Spirit be in our hearts, to not say, oh, it's just too hard to be a follower of Jesus. It's too hard to do this stuff. That's what the enemy wants, Paul says. And that's why he goes, we have small troubles right now, but that's nothing when we think of fact that Jesus is coming again someday. What we see here on earth, nah, it's not about what we look at right now. Don't set your eyes on that. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Set your eyes on what we cannot see right now, right? I can't see Jesus. I can't see him coming in the clouds for a second time. I can't see heaven. I can't see all those things, but we believe, right? If we have faith, we believe that Jesus is coming again. We know that everything we go through here on this earth, it all is meaningless when we think about being with Jesus, our friend Jesus, for forever and ever. And so that's what he says. Our bodies here on earth, this house that we live in right now, the enemy can attack it all the enemy wants because I know that I've got eternity in heaven and then in the new Jerusalem with my friend Jesus forever and ever. All right, so let's, let's skip to verse um, 6. So we always have courage. This is chapter 5, verse 6. We know that while we live in this body, we're away from the Lord. We live by what we believe, not what we can see. So I say that we have courage and we really want to be away from this body and be at home with the Lord. And so then he's saying here, right? Do you remember way back in the Old Testament in the book of Joshua? What was our takeaway verse for the book of Joshua? It was, be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And that's what Paul is saying here. He goes, we have courage. We might be living in this body. We might be living in this earth where things are hard and the enemy attacks. Oh, and it can be so discouraging. And we have struggles and things happen in our homes and in our families and in our schools and with our friends and in our churches. And it can be discouraging. But Paul here is saying, but we live by what we believe. We live by what we believe, not what we see. And what do I believe? That Jesus is with me wherever I will go so I can be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous because the enemy, he's been defeated. He's been defeated. We've got the Holy Spirit living in our hearts. Let's skip forward now. I mean, I even see like verse 14, the love of Christ controls us because we know that one died for all. All right, but now let's look at, um, let's look at seven, verse 17. So chapter five, verse 17. If anyone belongs to Christ, then he is made new. The old things have gone. Everything is made new. All of this is from God. Through Christ, God made peace between us and himself. And God gave us the work of bringing everyone into peace with him. I mean that God was in Christ, making peace between the world and himself. And in Christ, God did not hold the world guilty of its sins. And he gave us this message of peace. So we have been sent to speak for Christ. It is as 
as if God is calling you through us. We speak for Christ when we beg you to be at peace with God. Christ had no sin, but God made him become sin. God did this so that in Christ we would become right with God. God. So here Paul is saying, church, that's our job now. We want everyone to experience God's love. We want everyone to have this peace. And so Christ came and shared the good news of his love, what God was doing by saving us from our sins, by defeating the serpent Satan. And now God says, I mean, Paul says, that's what we get to do. That's what we get to do while we're here on this earth, as hard as it can be sometimes, we get to share the message of peace. We get to share the, the news that because of Jesus, God doesn't hold us guilty. He says, no, you're free. You're good. You're loved because of Jesus. What good news. Now let's flip forward to chapter 12. Chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, and we're going to see Paul share something here about what he's going through. Chapter 12, verse 7. Chapter 12, verse 7. And he's talking about how Paul is going, I'm going to brag about the things that God has done for me. I am going to be confident about it. I will not stop sharing the good news of Jesus. But then he's also saying, but it's a struggle. Uh, verse 7, but I must not become too proud of the wonderful things that were shown to me. So a thorn in the flesh was given to me. This problem is a messenger from Satan. It is sent to discourage me and keep me from being too proud. I begged the Lord three times to take this problem away from me. But the Lord said to me, my grace is enough for you. When you are weak, then my power is made perfect in you. So I am very happy to brag about my weaknesses. Then Christ's power can live in me. So I am happy when I have weaknesses, insults, hard times, suffering, and all kinds of troubles. All these things are for Christ. And I am happy because when I am weak, then I am truly strong. So what is Paul saying here? It says here, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a problem from the messenger, Satan. So we don't know what this is, but think about a thorn. You think about a thorn bush or maybe a thorn on a flower. It's pokey, right? It's pokey. It's uncomfortable. Think about the crown of thorns that Jesus had to wear when he was crucified, right? It was not, it was not an encouraging. It wasn't a good thing, right? And Paul is saying, I have this thorn. Something is, is poking me. Something is discouraging me. And it's from Satan, right? The enemy is attacking us. And he goes, and I begged God, take it away from me. Take it away. But God did it. Maybe it was a sickness. Maybe it was a struggle. We don't know what it was. But sometimes God doesn't always answer our prayers the way we want. But God knows the perfect answer to all prayers. And Paul says, because of this, because this, this pokey thorn is staying with me, it's going to be my reminder that it's not my strength, it's God's. And that's what happens sometimes when we go through hard times. The enemy wants to use those hard times to pull us away from God. But what should we do in those hard times? In those hard times, like Paul, we go to God. We say, God, I'm struggling with this thing, but I'm not going to let Satan discourage me. Because when I am weak, then I am truly strong because it's Christ's power in us. It's the power of God that carries us through those hard times. So maybe there's something going on in your family. Maybe there's something going on at school, hard times with your friends, whatever it might be. We go to God with those things and we, we lay it at his feet. And he might not answer our prayers the way we think we want them answered, but no matter what, we don't let the enemy win. We don't let the enemy discourage us. Instead, we say, I am feeling weak right now, God, but I am strong because you live in me. Your love is in me. I can be strong and courageous. I do not have to be terrified when the enemy comes attacking me. I will not be discouraged for you are with me wherever you go. 
And so that is where in verse 9, the Lord, God told Paul, my grace is enough for you. When you are weak, my power is made perfect in you. So, And that's what God tells us. Those times when we're struggling, he goes, hey, my grace has got you. You're good. Hold on to me. You're good. And when we feel weak, I've got the power for you. I've got the power for you. I am with you no matter what. So that's what we're seeing in 2 Corinthians. Paul is real with that church. And he says, but no matter what, no matter how the enemy attacks, we reject those lies we go to God and his power will carry us through. Let's say a prayer and close our time together. Dear God, we're so thankful that your grace covers us. You love us so much. We will not listen to those lies of the enemy. Even when we go through struggles and weaknesses and struggle, like things in our body or in our world around us, we know that you are with us wherever you go. Your power, your Holy Spirit lives in our hearts and will carry us through. We thank you for your love in your name. Amen. All right, so there's discussion questions in the video description below. And then 2 Corinthians 12, 9 is our takeaway verse. And this is where God says, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is perfected in weakness. Therefore, Paul says, I will most gladly boast all the more about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may reside in me. All right, so Christ's power may reside in me. All right, I'm going to let you go because Clyde is here and he wants to play with his new toy. And I will see you next time.